Support for this podcast comes from Synchrony. Ever wonder how to calculate your true cost of financing and how to fit the price of financing into your business and pricing for products and services? In Synchrony's new and improved toolbox website, you can easily calculate your cost of credit, view educational videos, and learn more about Synchrony's digital tools. Simply go to toolbox.syf.com to explore and learn more. Welcome to The Successful Contractor, powered by CertainPath, formerly Success Group International, a show for residential contractors about residential contractors. We chronicle business journeys, share insights, and celebrate successes in this wonderful industry. I'm your host, Bob Houchin. As a reminder, all episodes of The Successful Contractor are available on YouTube as well as your podcast player of choice. And for more information on how CertainPath can put your contracting company on a certain path to success, visit our website, www.mycertainpath.com. I'm excited to bring you an interview with Gary Craddock of Craddock Electrical Services in Nashville, Tennessee. As you'll see in here, Gary puts an incredible amount of value, effort, and energy in relationships, especially those relationships with his employees. He tries to treat his people like family. The result? Since joining CertainPath in April of 2021, Braddock Electrical Services has more than doubled its revenue very profitably. We finished this last year at $3 million in sales. Not bad, given in 2021, they did around 1.6 million and didn't make nearly as much profit. So without further ado, here's Gary Craddock, Craddock Electrical Services in Nashville, Tennessee. I hope you enjoy our conversation and take away another two. Gary, thank you so much for taking some time from your expo to be here today uh, to talk with me. For those who haven't had the pleasure of meeting you, could you kind of share with everyone your name, your company name, and where you're located? Uh, my name is Gary Craddock, Craddock Electrical Service, and I'm in Nashville, Tennessee. Very good. We're talking for a great reason. You've had uh, a really good, at least year. Kind of share with everyone your growth over the last year or two. Um, well, I started in April the 28th, uh, 2021. Um, that year, I had a big bowling alley job going on, and it's about eight hundred, nine hundred thousand dollars job. So we finished at one point four. Mm-hmm. So that meant in service work, I did about uh, six hundred thousand. Mm-hmm. And so the following year, um, when I get back from profit days and everything, I wrap a truck, I get things going, and I start doing service calls. And right now, before I left to come here, the uh, P and L said we was at two point four. Um, that's total revenue, yeah. total service trucks. The guy's doing nothing but residential service is at 1.6. That's great. That was great. Uh, the other part is some commercial stuff. Well, congratulations. That's fantastic. Now, and yeah, share with everyone, what's your team look like? How many electricians do you have? That right, work? right now I have, uh, five lead electricians, uh, three apprentices, two of them just started, uh, electrical school, the four year apprenticeship program to okay. be a, a licensed electrician. Mm-hmm. I just had two that uh, graduated right. um, that are late Austin lead techs. Um, I've got people that's been working with me for one guy I've been working with. He was, I was his helper. Oh, really? When I started <laughs> uh, 30 years ago. Yeah. And so we still work together today. That's great. Um, and the guys that I have, the new ones have been with me a couple of years. Yeah. Um, and people, I don't have a problem keeping yeah. an employee. Um, it's attracting the right person to take sure. a chance on, on me. Yeah. Just like I'm taking a chance on them. Yeah. Um, it's, it's been great since, uh, EP, uh, we actually, when the EP started, um, I had five people counting me. Yeah. I was running service calls, answering the phone and doing everything. I didn't you were even, answering the phone too. Yeah. I didn't even have anybody in the, in the office because I, I, I couldn't afford it. You know, um, well, I, I thought I couldn't afford it. Right. Once you get priced right and you learn the basics of the business, then you can do some of these things. So I went from mm-hmm. that to I have three ladies in the office now. Is that right? So they, um, they take inbound and they, they dispatch? They do outbound, yeah. they dispatch, they take care of everything. Um, and one thing that has changed the most is I'd get up early in the morning, I'd get to the office, I'd get there about six o'clock, they come in at seven. Yeah. That would give me an hour's time to kind of figure out what I wanted to talk to them about, what the day was before, this and that, and do all this stuff. Yeah. Um, nowadays I come in at uh, 7.30. Yeah. Um, and I'm just uh, there to say, uh, how's the wife doing? You, doing? you need anything for me? 
uh, you good get people okay. make a difference. And 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 it has made such a difference because um, I've been to so many classes that SJ has uh, given, um, and I want to use the SOS method. You know, mm -hmm. I want to shape you, observe you, and show you, show you, observe and shape you, um, and. I was doing that, yeah, and and that stuff's working great. And my operations manager come to me one day and says, "Hey, man, I'd like to try something a little bit different." Okay, and I said, "Okay, what it is it?" And he had worked for Frito Lay and run about seventy-five to one hundred fifty trucks, you know. And it, so he's got a lot of knowledge, and he makes me a better business guy. Yeah, so I'm really blessed to have him with me. Um, and he said, "Hey, let's let's try this." And I said, "Okay." His suggestion was, "How about you come in at seven thirty?" Eight o'clock. Yeah, I'll take care of the training and do some other stuff. And I was like, "Wait a minute! I don't know if that's a great idea because I'm being told by my coaches and everything that I I need to show them, observe them, and shape them, and then give yeah. them, you know, smart, uh, measurable time, all this stuff." And he's like, "I understand that, Gary." He said, "But I don't think you understand that whenever you're here, they are so worried about disappointing you oh, wow. that they lock up." they are not themselves yeah and the only reason that they do that is because they respect you so much they want to do well for and, you and you know i'm really blessed to have my employees grown men tell me that they love me wow that's cool and and you know that's that's something to be proud of absolutely um and so that we have a great great culture yeah like what, what it is and this is all within the last year of most of these people of all like this operations manager how long has he been with you he's been with me about the time that i came into a um, certain path yeah um he retired from uh, frito lay his son is my service manager okay and um his son mentioned that his dad was looking for something to do something to run do. parts or, or whatever and I kind of resisted it a little bit because I didn't know how the dynamic would work and I was a little bit worried. Yeah. Um, after a little bit, I kind of put that stuff to bed and said, hey, you know, I think that guy could really help me because I, I had a light bulb moment, you know, electrician had a light bulb moment. <laughs> I was like, hey, uh, this guy ran 150 trucks, you know. Right. Hey, Richard, come, come, let's talk. And so over the last um, two years almost, yeah. uh, year and a half, um, he went from running parts to being the operations manager yeah. and everybody goes to him and me and him talk. We keep our uh, traction. The book traction is a great, oh, yeah. great book. I sure. read it once. I bought the audio book and I listened and followed along with it. Yeah. It is such a great thing. If, if, if people out there haven't read it or done it, they, that's the first thing they need to do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but anyway, it has been a blessing all the way around. That's great. What a good story. And we just got into it. Uh, so let's let's backtrack a little bit. How, how did you get into electrical? Let's get let's do the, the whole Gary story. Well, on my website, there's a video to tell tell you uh, about it. But in a nutshell, my Atari uh, Pac-Man quit working. Uh huh. Um, black and white TV that I had went out, and yeah. my I didn't know what happened. And my cat ran behind the dresser, and the thing went. <laughs> Yeah. I was like, oh. So I found where the brake was I could in the line. I oh, said, oh, if I hold it together, it works. But as soon as I let it go, so I would see that it was broken. And it hit me out. Oh, I'll get a couple of wire nuts out of Dad's shed, and I'll splice it. Be fine. And so I did. I ran, ran out there. I grabbed some wire nuts. And on the way back, I ran through the kitchen. I grabbed a butcher knife out. <laughs> and I pulled the dresser out, and I found exactly where it needed to go. Yeah. And... Um, Okay, here I am, I'm ready. And I cut the line. Pow! <laughs> I didn't unplug, unplug it, it from the yeah. wall. Here comes my dad running, you know, whatever, and he says, like, well, go ahead, <laughs> fix it, you know? Yeah. And so I did, I fixed it, plugged it back up, and I played with that Atari for another two or three years. Is that right? So you were born to be an electrician. That kind of sparked <laughs> it. Um, I had a real good job uh, at a local grocery store at home. My grandmother worked there. Okay. And my son was five years old, mm -hmm. and he was graduating from kindergarten, going into the first grade. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to be off in two weeks on a certain date. And I told the manager that I worked for that I needed to be off. And he was off that week and told me that I could not take off. Oh, okay. Well, that was a problem. Uh, nothing's more important than my family. Sure. And I had... 
two other kids behind this one coming along, and I was like, well, the writing's on the wall. I can see it. So that day at lunch, I went and looked in the paper, because you could do that back then. Sure. And a guy was looking for an electrician, a helper. Yeah. And I called him, and I took the job, went home, told my wife. I went back told them I was going to give them a two-week notice, and they said, well, just go ahead and leave. <laughs> okay. So I went home, told my wife what I had done, and she said, how much is he going to pay you? Yeah. Wow, that would have been a great question. <laughs> Never asked him. All I was concerned about was the two weeks off. And yeah. he said, you give me two week notice, I don't care what it is, you're going to be off. Mm -hmm. Well, I went back in that, that Monday morning to go to work, and I said, hey, man, what are you, what's your pay? And he said, eight bucks an hour. I was making fourteen sixty five at the time. Yeah. Um, I went to work because that little voice said, you know, you got three kids, you've done this, you better go to work, and you'll figure it out as you go. Yeah. Um, I just kept my head down and kept working. One day he come to me and said, dude, you're, you're pretty slick. You, would you like to go to learn to be a true electrician and yeah. learn the theory and everything behind it? And so uh, I did, and I worked for this guy for about three years and didn't know it, but he graduated first in his class from Vanderbilt, electrical engineer, wow. worked at NASA, yeah. the Pentagon, and all this stuff. And the only reason I knew this is because after three years in school, I was getting pretty wise about stuff, and I would, Questioned him about a couple of things he wanted to do, mm -hmm. um, and he said, "Hey, don't just do it like I ask you to." Yeah. Well, finally that afternoon, he says, "Hey, here, let me show you this stuff." I had no idea that he was as intelligent sure. as he was. Yeah. And he said, "If you'll just listen to me, I'll have you the best service electrician in this town." Yeah. And I worked for him for the next ten years. Did you really ten years? He yeah. retires, um, and I take the test and start my own company. So you didn't take over that business. You didn't take the customers. You said, "I'm just gonna, no. I'm gonna do my own thing." No, but th my son and my family is the reason that I'm an electrician today. Mm -hmm. Is because there was nothing um, that was gonna stop me from being at my son's graduation. Yeah. Um, because those four people are the most important people. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, and so without having that conviction um, and that hill to die on. Yeah. I don't know if I'd be here today, right. um, but it was something that I, I was passionate about. Yeah, and I'm glad I was because um, it's gotten me um, a great life. Yeah, yeah. What year was it when you started? When you 2003. Were, 2003. Mm -hmm. Let's see. And you, you joined us just last year, so let's fill in that 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 time gap. How did business go? Did it, was it just you in a truck for a long time, or for were the, you the, for the first two? I know for the first three years, yeah. it was me doing everything. Made a great living, did, did great. Yeah. Um, and then uh, things started going really great. And one of my apprentices that helped me at the other company called me and said, hey, I'm, I'm going to leave and I want to you know if you, we could work together. Yeah. And I said, sure. So mm -hmm. he came over and we worked together for about another seven years until he had some health issues. Okay. Um, and... Um, so it was really, you were a small shop for a long time. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when did when did you start adding people? Was it only after meeting up with us? Or? I would say around 2010, 11. Uh -huh. um, I'm lucky that I'm a very conservative uh, type person. It mm -hmm. doesn't matter how much money I have. Mm -hmm. um, if I could get a lot that can take my trucks for 150 bucks, mm -hmm. um, that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. Even if I could afford to buy a hundred thousand dollar building, I'm just going to spend the one fifty a month and just let's see how this works for a while. Sure. Well, I'm glad I did that because in 2008, I didn't have any truck notes. I had about a six hundred dollar a month overhead. I was going to ask, yeah. And you know, I was just real conservative. Lucky I was. Yeah. Um, you stayed busy that whole time. Stay busy. That's I've never. I've, I've, I've always done really well. Yeah. But to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, over the last two years, I've learned that I've really thrown a lot of money away yeah. and mismanaged a lot. Yeah. Um, I always told people that I was an electrician that a business built up around rather than a businessman that started an electrical company. Right. And I'm more close to being a businessman today than I ever have been Sure. Um, because a certain path has actually taught me the numbers and how to... Yeah. For see, I, I never one time cash projected anything. Sure. We got so much money in the bank, we're booked out, we're, yeah. done, we're projecting good. Yeah. That's not how you do it. Right. Um, 
let's just say since I haven't even worried about if we're going to cover all of our expenses since I started with right. a certain path yeah. because of the way that we do things now. Sure. So, so what motivated you to finally get with us? Did someone reach out to you? Were you looking for, like, I want to grow this a little bit more? So how'd Well, that just like you guys want us to qualify most of our customers that call in our office, you do the same thing in your office by sending out that card about do you want to be a part of ESI. Mm -hmm. And it came in, and I'm like, of course, I always want to be more successful. Yeah. Um, and so I sent the card in. And the next thing I know, I'm getting calls about profit days. Okay. And I almost didn't do it. And I told the guy that called me, I said, hey, dude, let's just get to the shell. I know your game. <laughs> uh, my boss did this years ago. He yeah. paid the money, the 30000 or whatever it was. And he, he, he wrapped a van, he, but he thought he was smarter than you and can run the business better, but never did anything else. Mm -hmm. And he never did much with it. Yeah. And so it, I almost didn't go. Yeah. And so he, he calls me again, and I said, you know what, the way he approached it. Yeah. And that's the key to most anything in life is the way we approach a lot of things. I've learned that, matured enough over the last few years to understand that. Sure. And so um, from that point on, you know, we just, we just So grew. you went, so you went, you, 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 did you know you were gonna join when you, when you sat down or? No, no. I didn't know. Um, I just wanted to see what it was about. Sure. Um, then whenever he talked about the numbers and kind of how uh, the business was kind of run and yeah. what um, success looked like, um, I love Shark Tank. Oh yeah, great show. I t I've got probably uh, 12 episodes taped right now that we watch them one day all at once. Yeah. And it always upset me that if you ask me one day, you say, well, what's your customer acquisition cost and stuff? Uh -huh. And or what's this cost? And it's gotta be like, right. And so <clears throat> at Profit Day, I saw, oh, oh, they have the formula for right. the numbers and, and all the, you guys could teach me how to run my business like a businessman. Yeah. Instead of a, lack of better term, redneck <laughs> that was a good electrician yeah. that people loved. Right. And a, business built up around and people said, why don't you start your own thing, man? You work 20 hours a day. Yeah. And so um, really the ability <clears throat> to be honest, humble, and hungry. Yeah. And those are, those are my core values. Yeah. I really believe those are the three things that's got me where I'm at today. Yeah. And that's the three things that's gonna get me where I wanna go I in it. the future. So, so you join that day, not long after you're at EP, right? Mm -hmm. so you sit at EP in Dallas, all of a sudden this whirlwind is, is going on around you. What did you think of EP? Uh, I was overwhelmed. Yeah. I was overwhelmed. And uh, Sonia and them had told me about a couple of people that just came back and just throwed everything at their people. And I was like, wow, that don't seem smart. <laughs> you, you, don't, you don't even know how to do anything yet. Yeah. You, you don't even know how to access the deemer. Right. I mean but you're going back and throwing this. I'm like, nah, man, we're going to learn this stuff. We're going to figure it out. We're going to take three months and we're going to do this, this. Okay. So that's what you did. You took three months and, and just kind of start taking bites of the elephant. No, <laughs> you did the same thing. I did. Yeah. You just did. dove in. Um, I, 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 the, the little voice, the conscience. Yeah. Um, Jesus. Yeah. He said, man, let's get to, let's get to it. Yeah. Let's get to it. Um, and I just had the hair stand up all over my whole body. Yeah. I, I, I believe in karma and listening to the good man above, uh, being faithful. And I've matured enough over the last few years to really be sensitive to that kind of thing. Yeah. And so I just took off running. And it's one of the best things I ever did. What, what are some of the things that you changed right away that made the most impact? Um, Wrapping the van. Yeah. So you told me before That's we hit the, record. That's the biggest thing that made the most. Tell that story for, that you told me before we hit officially record. Uh, well, at, at, at Profit Day, that's the guy said that he's the, one of the biggest things you can do, and he said it two or three times. And most of the time, when somebody says something two or three times, they're really passionate about it, and it means something to them, and it's successful. So I was like, wait, wait a minute. Wrap the van. Is, that means that much. And yeah. I think I actually said something to him about it whenever I left. Move the phone over. It's picking oh. up the buzz. Oh, I think that's no, it. And, and so I asked him about it, and he said, yeah, he said, 
you don't realize what it what it does. Yeah. Um, then it hit me. I had an oil change guy come change some oil at my company because of the wrap he had on his van, and I was like, okay, so that's one of the first things I did. Yeah. I went back and wrapped my van. Invested in it. Yeah. And that van wrap turned into a major contract with um, um, a TC restaurant group company in Nashville. And I've had eight people working 40 hours a week uh, at 10 bars downtown just because he looked out the window and saw my character on my truck yeah. and my uh, slogan that says, we treat you like family. Yeah. So I came out and he talked to my technician that was working at one of the stores next door. And um, my, my thing is, it's we build relationships and electrical systems that last a lifetime. Yeah. And it's about the relationship that we can have. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I believe I have a great culture at my office is because it's always been about the relationship. Yeah. We have such a great relationship with uh, this guy's name's Jeff. Mm -hmm. um, I have such a great relationship with him. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no hiccups, there's no nothing. Yeah. Um, and it's been seamless. And it's just from a good ROI on that, that truck wrap. Who designed well, it for you? Um, I had um, a business, uh, I go to a business group in, at home each week, yeah. and I had somebody in the business group, uh, Minuteman Press. Is that right? Yeah. That was in Nashville. Yeah. He helped me with that. That's great. Mm -hmm. That's a good, so so we did that, the wrap, uh, but there was a lot of other things you did, like pricing, straightforward. The, the, so talk about that, what other big Yeah, stuff? well, you know, we started using a platform, uh, software. Mm -hmm. um, we uh, we use Service Titan. Uh -huh. um, and the reason that I use Service Titan is because uh, it's the best of the best. Mm -hmm. You know, it, two guys started their parent. Their parents were plumbers and electricians or heat and air guys, and they was just trying to help them keep their stuff organized. Yeah, uh, it's really a comprehensive thing. But if you talk to most people, it's so comprehensive, it's it's hard to deal with. Right. But it really helps me keep up with everything I need to keep up with. Yeah. It helps me keep up with things that I think fall through the cracks. Now that little uh, paper comes up and says, hey, don't forget about leaving the door hangers over here or, you yeah. know, or, or whatever. So it's so comprehensive. So that's one of the first things. You get that. You got your, okay. Got the service tightened going. Got the price book going. Yeah. Got it priced right. And for the first six months to maybe a year, yeah, I really didn't understand the... 15% of the material cost. Okay, sure. You know, um, but it finally hit me. Yeah. Um, and one of my electricians, the guy that's been with me um, when I was his apprentice years ago, he was having the hardest time with it. Yeah. But the light bulb went off for him about two, three weeks ago. And it's all because of the way that I went about coaching him up. Yeah. And that's the other thing, the biggest thing is is my mindset is I'm not a boss. I've never, I've always told my guys, I don't want to be your boss, man. Yeah. You know, but I have to be. Um, no, I don't. Right. I don't have to be their boss. Right. And I'm never going to be their boss ever again. Yeah. Um, I'm always going to be their coach. Mm -hmm. Inside me, it's always been about, I get more out of seeing successful people grow. Mm -hmm. um, there's just, there's no feeling like it in the world. Yeah. Um, opening the bank account, seeing a lot of numbers does nothing. Yeah. But if when that light bulb moment went off for my guy, yeah, it was a feeling of, of accomplishment that I can't explain. So what did you say to him? Because we hear that all the time. Well, you get older technicians, they just don't. They've been doing the same thing all the time. They don't want to learn. But there, I'm sure there's people that do want to learn. But you got to approach them the right way. So what did you, what did you say to him for him to understand the labor percentage and we got to get a certain gross margin on jobs? You just keep hammering at it each day or yeah. each, or every third day or every ticket that comes up. You uh, give scenario jobs. Mm -hmm. um, you take it. You go out to the job with him and you talk with the customer. Show him what needs to be done. Uh, send someone with him okay. that has the electronic knowledge. Mm -hmm. Like, they didn't have typewriters when I was in school. Sure. Neither did they for him. But I can't remember the exact slogan, but either you, you, you conform or you ship out. Yeah. And so I just keep telling him he has it. Yeah. You've got this in you. You just don't realize it. Just like Gus told me, I knew what my core values were um, the first time that I ever said anything to him, you just don't realize it yet. Yeah. He was right. Yeah. 
after six months of working on that stuff, he was right. I knew what they were at the beginning. Yeah, yeah. And that's what I told him. Yeah. I, you know what you're doing. You just don't realize it yet. So you saw he had he had the ability. He just He's didn't got the believe ability. himself to do it. Yeah. And exactly. Even if he didn't wasn't doing a great job, I told him he was doing a great job. Yeah. But then in a in a moment of I always tell my my people if it's about the relationship. Um, and you've got something that you want to talk to me about that might be a hard conversation. You come to me and say, hey, I need to have a hard conversation with five minutes and no consequence. Okay. And so I let my people come to me and tell me that I'm things that I don't expect them to say. Yeah. And sometimes it may be something that I need to hear. Yeah. A lot of times it's stuff I don't want to hear. Yeah. But you don't react to that. You yeah. tell them, I want you to tell me what's on your heart. And I won't react and I won't hold any consequences on it. You have to stick to that. Yeah. And even if it's hard, hard sometimes, if a guy's told you that, yes, I, I took a roll of wire off the truck. Yeah. And I told you I'm not going to fire you or anything for this. I just want to know the truth. Yeah. Because the truth, I can't trust you. Right. I can't have you going out to my people's homes. Yeah. And so just tell the truth. Um, okay. He said, yeah, I took the wire. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now I know that I need to talk to him about what can I do to help him not ever do that again. Yeah. You're not planning your job, your side jobs out well enough, <laughs> you know. And number two, I give you way more. You should feel so bad about taking that roll of wire yeah. that I don't have to say anything to convict you of it. Your own conscience should do that. Yeah. Because of the way that I treat you. Right. I give you way more than you could ever get anywhere else. Right. And so just him knowing that, yeah. And knowing how I approach it. Is um, he still with you? He's still with me. And is he, is he corrected himself? Is he doing a good job? Oh, with yeah. You? yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, the guy that actually that we're, we're talking about, um, we, we, we probably did this stuff when we worked for the, the guy that I learned to be an electrician from. Yeah, yeah. But out of 12 years of working for that guy, he gave me a $200 gift card to Home Depot one time and bought me a Christmas dinner. Yeah. That's all he ever did. Yeah. So either way, it's time. wrong. Yeah. It doesn't matter. You can't justify no, it. No, no, no. It's wrong. Right. People make mistakes. They do. It's not the mistakes that you make that matter. It's how you act after those that shows your true character. When did this mindset change? Did this happen when you joined us and you kind of just started thinking about business differently? Or no, have you always been this way? I've always had. Th okay. This part This part has always been a part of me. It's yeah. a gift from, from Jesus above. Yeah. Um, it's not... It's not me, yeah. <laughs> you know. It's a, it's a gift. Yeah. And and that's the reason I have such a great culture in my office is because it's not something I have to turn off and on. Right. So you do these one on like we talk all the time at, at certain path about the value of one on ones and and seeing what's going on in people's lives because they they can tell you care and if they know you care they're going to do great work for you. Mm -hmm. So you do the, those individual get together with everyone one on one. Is yes. it is it scheduled or you just just make the time? It's it's somewhat scheduled. Yeah. Uh, I tell them this week I'm going to get with each one of you and yes, ever since 6 months for sure. I talk with each one of them for 10 minutes. Um, Gus has a 30 minute check in. Mm -hmm. He actually sent it uh, an email to me. Yeah. Um, and so I adjusted a little bit. Um, I also asked them what their um, um, five most important things to them in life, personally and professionally. Yes. Oh, interesting. Okay. Right. Um, had another light bulb moment. This works in your family dynamic. If you have a problem with a family member, you just ask them what's your five most important things. You try to do one of those things, they automatically want to do something for you. Yeah. Well, if I can do that for my family, why can't I do that with my guys? Yeah. They're the guys that provide me what I need to give you. Right, right. And so I just started doing this stuff with, with them, and they see my true heart. Yeah. So you told me you, uh, you, you try to give them experiences. You try to, yeah. and she mentioned you did a, uh, what I'm going to, the 3D sonogram for one of your, your, your yeah. text wives or someone who's pregnant. So is that stuff you, what other kind of stuff have you been doing? Well, I've always done stuff like that. I've always done little things because, like I said, that's the joy in life to see somebody get something that they, didn't expect or, or whatever, or help them achieve a goal. Yeah. Um, and I've told somebody in the platoon or wherever I was at last time, one of the most valuable things that you can do is what I do at 7.30 to 8 o'clock every morning. 
just walk around and say hello. How's Alexandria? I try to know, and I don't know them all, 80%. I know their wife's names, their kids' names, um, what their dream is. I want to know, you know, what's your dream? Uh, what are you working home at home right now that's important to you that you want to accomplish or get done? Yeah. Um, and if I can help them get that done, um, I want to encourage them, and especially if they went out, blood, sweat, tears, yeah. rain, shine. They are heavy lifting. Yeah. Um, I love sharing that with them. That's neat. Um, and that's the joy. The thing you do is just listen. Yeah. And so the guy, and I actually, um, the reason people work with me as long as they do, I feel like is because of the way I treat them and I truly care about them. Yeah. Um, one of the guys that I got the sonogram for, um, I have a, a granddaughter the same age as his son. So we're parallel coming yeah. along. Well, I go to these 3D and 4D ultrasounds with my son and his wife, and I'm like, wow. I knew Paul didn't have the means to, to do that, yeah. but it's a great thing. And so he bends over backwards, he does something great, and I'm like, I tell you what we're gonna do. So I, I went by there, I got a gift certificate, um, and I didn't just get the bare minimum, I got the best of the best and said, I want to treat them all of my employees get the same thing that one of my sons would get if I were trying to encourage one of my sons to do something. Yeah. My employees get the same thing my son would. Yeah. There's no difference. Right. And so I hear him say that, you know, they're going to ultrasounds and they're doing something. And he done something that I thought that I wanted to reinforce that behavior. Yeah. And so I was like, I went and got this stuff. So I gave it to him. Yeah. He got to take his family, her family. They got to do the 3D yeah. thing. They got the bear with the heartbeat. They got everything. Yeah. And it was the greatest experience he's ever, he's ever had. Yeah. He came back to me and actually gave me a hug <laughs> and said, man, thanks so much yeah. for the experience you gave my wife. Yeah. And that's what it's all about. Yeah, and you gave him the time. I mean, and you gave him the time off to do that, right? Gave him the time off. Because there's a lot of guys are going to be, you know, oh, I can't get off work to go to that. I have to. My boss was, you know, hit, hitting me up. I got, I got, you know, sixty hours this week. Yeah. There is no customer that you got to have no power and a couple of kids, but there's no customer's money more important than that home time. Yeah. And that family life that they have. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's the biggest thing that I do, I believe. Yeah. So you talk, you talk to your people all the time. You, you try to find these unique experiences. Yeah. My secretary, my wife, my wife wouldn't give you anything, mm -hmm. uh, but I'd give it all away. So we're, <laughs> we're great. Yeah. Um, my secretary, I've only had her for about two years. Um, does great stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I rewarded her a lot. And my wife says, Hey, you need to slow down. So she, I done rewarded her with something. She does something that she didn't have to do. And I was like, okay, great, great. I hold up, hold up. You don't want to be too much, you know? So I waited, I waited, I waited. She done a couple other things. And I'm like, I'm, hon, can I give her something yet? You know, I'm thinking to myself, I'm not asking my wife, but yeah. in my mind, I'm working with myself. And I hear her, um, in one of these 30 minute deals, I hear her telling the other CSR that she's going to have her family together for the first time in 15 years. Wow. All of them. Yeah. They think they're coming for one thing, but they're actually coming for her daughter, just probably her daughter. There's gonna be about 50 of them. And I said, Tammy, do you have somebody documenting that for you? Because it hit me. 15 years, it may be another 15 years. Yeah. You might like to have some really good pictures or something, you know? And I asked her that and she said, yeah, we're gonna take pictures with our iPhones and stuff. And I said, Tammy, you do amazing stuff for me. And I said, I really wanted to do something nice for you about a month ago, really. I said, but I need to slow down a little bit. I said, but it, would you like to have a photographer come take pictures, video, whatever? I said, I'll throw whatever it takes to get you a photographer to come video and do whatever. Yeah. And she said, no, you're not gonna do that. <laughs> and I'm sitting at, my, at the desk and I said, yeah. I said, Tammy, I know you're, you're, you're gonna want that. Yeah. It's something that every woman would enjoy. Yeah. 
And she said, no, I'm not going to let you know. You, you can't do that. Yeah. And the reason she says that is because I'm nice to her all the time. I try, I, she's, my, she's my work wife. Yeah. And I treat her like she's my work wife. Yeah. And so um, <clears throat> I got up out of the seat. And I walked over to the desk, and I said, Tammy, I understand what you're saying. And I said, but let's look at it from this perspective. I know you don't want me to do this because I already do enough. Yeah. I said, but don't you realize that you are depriving me of the opportunity to feel special knowing that I did something great for you? Yeah. And she looked at me and was like, okay. Mm -hmm. And I said, it really does something for me to see you happy. Yeah. Um, it's one of the greatest gifts that Jesus gives me. Yeah. Um, it's what I live for. Right. Um, I get emotional about it sometimes because that's the most important thing I can do. Yeah. The customers, we're going to take care, take care of the customers. Yeah. But I got to take care of these guys like they're my sons. Yeah. And they do agree. I mean, they, and they, obviously they know love, love where they work. They want to do a good job for you. You're going to have a few that don't fit that's, in in the culture sure. and stuff, but sure. the ones that we have now. Yeah. Um, if somebody walked up in that or pulled up in that driveway and was trying to get at me or hurt me, yeah, you know, it won't happen. Yeah. They would all come running in a heartbeat. Yeah. And, and I don't do this stuff for any expectation of anything in return. Yeah. I do it to show them respect mm -hmm. that I'm not up here and you're down here. Yeah. We're right here together. Right. I'm not special. I'm just like you are. Mm -hmm. The only thing different in me and you is Jesus gave me the desire to be a customer service rock star. Yeah. And I'm good at it. Yeah. I can go out and fix electrical stuff and make a relationship with you. That That's why I've been in business for so long. Yeah. It's stuff I was doing back in the day in 2003, 4, and 5. I didn't realize it was cultivating that relationship. Right. And some of the stuff that you guys have taught me in the last few classes, I had been doing for years. Yeah. And I just didn't realize what I was doing. Sure, sure. And so I never advertised anything. Is that right? And today, I don't advertise. Really? I've done everything that I've done on word of mouth and reputation in my hometown. Yeah. Um, we're going to change that. Yeah. Um, and we're going to go from the 2.4 to 5. And the only way to get there is um, you've got to spend a little marketing money. Yeah. The only way that I get there is by having... Uh, mentors and people in the platoon that yeah. that that feed into me, yeah. pour into me, give me everything that I ever ask them for. Right. So, so those watching and listening, we have profitable platoons, which are groups of members that get together, and you guys meet. What well, some of them is, is frequently it's monthly, right? Once a month. You guys get to one. And so, what you fly to what Tampa, or where do you guys where do you fly? Uh, wherever they are, one they might be in Winter Haven, uh, they might be in Tampa, yeah, Orlando. Um, so I've flown into like three or four different airports. Yeah. Uh, I get a rental car. I, I will leave the office on the day before around 10 or 11, fly, get there, go to the hotel, eat, sleep, get up, go to the platoon, leave the platoon at three, get to the airport about four or five, get on the plane at six, home at 10, back. Yeah. Um, Love it. Yeah. I mean, that's a lot. That's a commitment to do that. But you, you get so much value out of it. Well, it's, it's the least I could do for my team. Mm -hmm. I mean, they work hard, man. Yeah. They're out here uh, crawling in attics with rock wool that will eat you alive. Yeah. Uh, they're crawling under houses, and they're doing the heavy lifting. Yeah. Yes, I did heavy lifting for years. Sure. And it got me to where I'm at today. But that don't mean that I need to use my guys yeah. to stay where I'm at. Yeah. I can use them to grow. Right. If I use them to stay where I'm at, that's where I'm going to stay. Sure. And so um, this stuff is stuff that was given to me when I was born. Yeah. You know, and it's the way that I look at stuff. Right. Um, it's the way I was raised, you know. Mm -hmm. You treat people right. Support for this podcast comes from Bradford White. Bradford White is a full-line manufacturer of residential and commercial water heaters and boilers. While being manufactured and assembled in the USA by American craftspeople, 
Bradford White's goal is to deliver high quality, superior products specifically built for the professional contractor. You can always count on the performance and reliability of our built to be the best products. Visit BradfordWhite.com to learn more. Uh, I wanted to ask you about the, the platoon. So, what? Talk about that one day that you're there. What, what's what's the flow? What's what's the um, general you know the, schedule? The platoon is a high level ten meeting in the traction book mm -hmm. uh, because John and uh, Billy asked me about traction. I was reading it. And I said yes. I hadn't got it all the way through. He said, Well, you're at a, a level ten meeting now. Yeah. Um, and so we have an agenda. We follow. We have one person that leads it. Um, the meeting, uh, we follow an agenda. We have a, a task um, for the month. You go back. Uh, if you haven't got that task done, then we donate money to one of the Bowls for Honors or Tony Towers or something of that nature. Yeah. Um, but it's really structured. Um, like I said, I get there uh, 7 30, 8 o'clock. We do our thing, we have lunch. It's usually done around 2 or 3. Yeah. Um, and then I head back home. What are, what are some of the things that you've, what tasks have you had over the last couple months that you're like, oh, I need to work on that, I need to work on this? Um, what I've been working on is the truck inventory and replenishment. Oh, that's a big, yeah. And that's a, that's a, a tough one. I've just barely made my goal, you know, yeah. where I didn't have to pay the, <laughs> the bank. Um, but yes. What did you do? What needed work? Um, just getting the all the materials in little bins and knowing that we're going to coat it with CB4 and this is a plug and, and getting the PO system and everything coinciding together. Yeah. It's not 100% there, yeah. um, but it's so much to it, it's like threefold, so I've been able to achieve my goal each time. Um, how, long is it, how long has that been? Kind of right. Two months. Two months. Have you noticed material percentage go down maybe? You guys aren't buying oh, yeah. extra stuff? Oh yeah. Um, the difference between me now and the old Gary before I met you is last month I was able, to, actually before I left to go to the platoon meeting, um, I was able to go in and tell them, say, hey guys, at this same time last month we had the same amount of revenue, but we have spent Fifteen thousand dollars more mm -hmm. this time. Mm -hmm. So let's look at the shop. Be sure we get all our stuff off our parts and stuff. Because I I I, bought, I spiff them well. I yeah. spiff them really well. The platoon tells me I'm too generous. <laughs> but long story short, um, they they do that. We I forgot my train of thought. No, just in how in terms of what the. Uh, the last two months, you've kind of got your materials in order. And they've been and helping. We've been the percentages are now yes. where they need to be based on the model. And then I tell them, and so they they start watching that stuff. Yeah. Um, and so. So you yes. told you told the team that you told you're the team. So they understand. Hey, this is there's a lot of money going out the door if exactly. we're not careful. Exactly. And they, and they have the buy-in because of all the, that you've invested in them. They know that they can trust me. Yeah. I'm transparent. I actually have sent the P&L to their emails and let them just look at them. Wow. Okay. Um, so that they can see what's going on. And you've there. been very profitable too, from what I hear. So they see that you're making money. We're, we're making money. Yeah. And and uh, we're able to do a lot of good things in the community. You know, the love thy neighbor thing that you talked to me about is something I'm really passionate about. Yeah. Um, and each month we're able to make an impact on our community. Yeah, I was going to say on your website, it said you donate 15% of revenue or something like that, or what is that about? Well, we, we, we do about 10%. Well, it's still a lot. We, yeah. really, we really do. Um, is it in terms of contributions to charities, or is it time? I mean, what are you, what are you doing? What, what charities are you working with? Well, we, we do Christmas for kids. Last year we did uh, 225 kids. Wow. Uh, we got them Christmas. 225 200, kids, that's a lot. $200 a kid. Whoa. Uh, we, we spent. And I got into this from my business group. Uh, yeah. A guy had started this and I started helping him. And so we've, we, we raise money. Uh, we go shopping with the kids. Um, and so it's all about the children. So I'm all about. Christmas. And the team does this. The whole team does this with the yeah, kids. Yeah, we, oh. we, we invite them. They, uh, not all of them. Some of them will come shop. Some of them won't. Yeah. Uh, some of them will donate, you know, it's all of what you feel comfortable with. Sure. Um, but yeah, that's that's what we do. Wow, that's neat. And we love it. 
Oh man, we love it. The, yeah. I think the customers love it too. I think also that for me, I just know that if I needed to have a disposal put in, mm -hmm. and I had to choose between two companies, and one of them said, "I guarantee you, ten percent of what you give me is going to buy a kid Christmas this year." Yeah. How do you not? Um, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I would love to do twenty percent. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, because the kids are our future. Uh, St. Jude's. Uh, we're oh, you were with St. Jude's too. I haven't been. Now, I, I, I something give to you for towers. Like I said, I give it all away. Yeah, I give it all away because it's just it's not my money anyway. No. It's, it's a good Lord's money. We're just passing it around, and I don't worry about if I'm broke or not. Yeah. I don't. If if I know you need a hundred dollars, I don't worry about whether I have hundred ten in the bank. If I got a hundred and you need it, I yeah. can give it to you. Yeah. Because. I'm going to be provided everything I need. Yeah. And I have a piece inside that I can't explain to everybody. Yeah. Somebody said, why do you do that? Well, you'll understand one day. Yeah. Why? Um, but man, it's I, your... that's what we do. You know, I, I was also, we talked before we hit record officially, I, I was reading your website. I was really impressed with, you've got your core values. And you, not only is it just the core values, you've got a very detailed description about what each one means. When did you do that? Was that after EP, or was that one of the big changes? You, you know, maybe speak to the how did you how did you create them? Was it by yourself? Did you get the team involved? Foundational leadership. Michael Zeller uh, went to that class, and he had a great impact on me. Mm -hmm. And I went back, and I do not let anything get in the way of the Tuesday ten o'clock uh, leadership team meeting. So you have a leadership meeting, mm -hmm. just leadership, no. Soft skills selling, it's a leadership meeting. Okay. It's just about what we're doing, where we're going, one, three, five, ten year plan. Yeah. Um, and we talk about how can we make it better? How are we unique from everyone else? Wow. Um, and like I said, someone told me, you already know what those core values are, you just don't realize it yet. Yeah. And yes, honest, humble, and hungry, I could change those to use the C for credit and they could all be the same thing. Yeah. But to be transparent and just the way it is, that's what I always say. Yeah, but now but you still gotta put it out, you know, I think when you put pen, pen to paper and you and people see it, I think they go, Whoa, he's serious about this. This isn't just lip service. Exactly. We don't shoot in the dark any longer. Yeah. For eighteen years we shot in the dark and everything we did at the company now we don't shoot in the dark yeah. on anything. I wanna let the guys know what we're doing. I wanna let the guys know, hey, I'm thinking about doing this. What do you think about this? Mm -hmm. Now, in my company, yeah, I have the final say. Sure. But I can guarantee you that out of 16 people, if nine of those people said that we needed to do something different and I thought we needed to do another thing, yeah. I would slow down on doing the other thing and really consider what they said first. Sure. And my 80% go with what they said. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because you put good people around you for what reason and you don't want to listen to them. Mm -hmm. It's hard sometimes. Mm -hmm. It's hard. Sure. Like I said, it's not the mistakes you make. It's how you act after them. Right. And if you keep that core value, everything else will fall in place. So do you talk about the values a lot in that leadership meeting as well? I do. We, yeah. That's how we come up with the stuff that, what they are. Okay. That's, that came from that meeting. Because we first had the three C's, you know, character, you know, well, honesty is character. Yeah. Humble is character as well. Sure. You know, so I've always been honest, humble, and hungry. Yeah. That's what we are. Yeah. That's what we are. That's great. Even to a fault. Um, we've been honest with customers, whatever, it's cost me money. Sure. You know, but I'm, I just, I just tell people all the time I'm not smart, smart enough to be a good liar, so I don't even try. Yeah. Even when it's not good for me to tell you the truth, Yeah. I, I have to tell you the truth. Yeah. I have to. Sure. You, you have these meetings on Tuesdays. Do you have any other trainings, regular trainings, or, or get-togethers? Well, you know, I was doing, like I said at the beginning, I was doing the SOS method, and showing, mm -hmm. observing, and shaping it, you know, and then the guy said, hey, I think we'd probably do better off if you wasn't here. Yeah, so your operations you so much. Doing it. Yeah. So they take over the training, um, and it's working. That's great. They're, That's one last thing. It's, I mean, I know you enjoy doing it, but it frees your time up to do something and else. And it gives me time to work on the business, to be sure 
Um, like the reason that I go to the platoon and stuff is because I'm hungry for knowledge. Sure. I want to do the best I can at everything I do. Yeah. And if I'm going to ask my guy to go out and crawl in a hundred degree attic and do something yeah. and do the best he can for that customer, why don't I do the best for sure. him? Sure. And, and sometimes as owners, who do we have to hold us accountable? Yeah. Um, Those I platoons guys, definitely do. Yeah. The platoons do, but I have an open door policy. My guys can come in my office and say, I need five minutes with no consequences and yeah. tell me that we're screwing this up. Yeah. yeah. I might need to know that. Right. Well, at least it's coming from a, if they're t worried, about, they're worried about the business, you can tell exactly. they care, right? Exactly. You know, they're invested. They're not just there collecting a check. It's not there for an argument or whatever. That I'm an idiot. They're like, hey, we're doing this and this might be something that we, because if you want to make a difference, Make a suggestion. Yeah. Just tell me. I can't fix anything if I don't know there's a problem. Right. Right. Um, and so we have changed everything. Yeah. From Hillbilly Gary doing <laughs> what, he's, what he thinks is right yeah. and treating the customers yeah. with respect. Yeah. Treating them the way they want to be treated, not the way I want right. to be treated. Right. What I want doesn't matter. Right. And I tell you, <clears throat> I ran service calls in town uh, for 12 years for that guy and I was able to go by and eat lunch with my grandmother at least three days a week. Oh wow. She was 85. Um, she couldn't get around an awful lot um, but I would go get lunch and I'd just eat with her. Obviously I'd fix a lot of stuff around her house and, yeah. and if I didn't have to charge grandma for anything I wouldn't charge her for nothing. Yeah. But if I had to buy a $200 vent fan, well, sure, she'd want to pay for the vent fan. Yeah. And so when I started my business, I said, uh, Nanny, is there any advice that you would have for me, you know, as, as I start this thing? And she said, buddy, because she called me buddy, all you have to do is treat all your customers the way you've treated me, and you're going to be successful. Yeah. And so I thought about that, and... I can, I'm seeing this happen as I'm sitting here talking to you. A big African-American fella, 6'6", six, six, comes to the door, one of my first calls. Yeah. And within a split second, I saw my grandmother. Is that right? And I remembered what she said. And I said to that guy, hey, man, how you doing? Yeah. Did you have a good day? Or well, how, how'd you do? You know, what, whatever I said to him. It was like my grandmother. When I walked up, I talked to him just like I did my grandmother. And he kind of had that look on his face like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. And I kind of <laughs> sensed that. Yeah. I said, hey, man, I'm just trying to, trying to build a relationship here, see, see what you're doing, uh, so forth and so on. And I tell my guys that I think it's the most powerful thing we can do is I don't care if I've had three people at the office talk to your next call. Yeah. And they know that you're coming between 1.30 and 2, yeah. whatever. I want you to pick up the phone and call the customer and just say, hey, this is Gary. I just want to let you know that I just left uh, West Nashville and I'm headed your way. And the ETA is such and such time. Yeah. And if you'd like, I can share my route with you so you can run town and you can see where I'm coming or whatever. Yeah. Um, those things build relationships that are invaluable. Yeah. And you're going that little extra mile. A little extra. Same thing with the with the with the uh, big guy. Um, made a mistake, did something. He didn't act like it was in the world. Yeah. Because I had already built a little bit of a relationship, and he knew I was a human being. Yeah. And it's not what the mistakes you make; it's how you act. Right. I told him truth. I arced it out. It did whatever. It burnt the wire. Yeah. In two. Now I've got to cut the all open, set another box, and pull it up. So, you know, I told him the truth. Yeah. And, and you I make it right. Make yeah. it right. And I didn't charge him for that extra stuff that I had to do. Yeah. Um, and so I've always done that, is treated all the customers and looked at them like they were my grandmother yeah. and tried to build that rapport yeah. with them. Yeah. And that's how I've stayed in business and being conservative. In 2008, I had been in business. <clears throat> well, in 2003... Um, I started 2005. I had a motorcycle wreck that put me out for a year. Oh wow! The guys that are working for me now, yeah. The guys that work with me, yeah. Um, a couple of them actually did a couple of jobs because people would still call me and I'd tell them I'm laid up, I can't work. But they wanted the work done. And I said, Well, I could get you somebody over there. They actually went and did the work and sent me the money. Oh wow! Yeah. 
So, so you've all you've always just just made that connection. It's important to you. It's the it's the most important thing that we can do. And I mean, I, I hate to tie it back to it, but now you know, you, you now that you know your numbers, and you know how to price yourself right, and you've been doing all this stuff. The business is growing, and you can give you can do those. You can hire the photographer, right? You have mm -hmm. the resources to take even better care of your people, mm -hmm. right? Which I think is great because you and you take care of the community. You reciprocate in every way. Is every, every way that I can. Yeah. Um, I'm at I'm at church a month ago, and um, the guy says, "Hey, we everything's great, but just so you know, in the future, we'd like to have such and such." And um, it's we need some transportation stuff because the people come in late. It's a little hilly. Yeah. Long story short, when he said that, I was like, "Okay." Called him after church and shook his hand and told him, I said, hey, give me a call Monday, we'll go pick up what you was wanting. And he went, man, you work fast. <laughs> and I said, what a blessing. It, it was. Yeah. And and I went back and I shared with my team and I was like, man, y'all, look what we was able to do. You went by, yeah. And, and that's why we work so hard. Sure. And anybody that knows me, that's known me my whole life or truly knows me. Yeah. No, and all my guys know that I get a kick out of seeing them with that light bulb moment. And like, oh, you really? Oh. Like the guy that did the mammogram. Yeah. When he um, had his baby, um, I give him the whole month off. Oh, wow. And I paid him for the whole month. Yeah. Who does that? Yeah. That's There's true. a lot of people that do. Yeah. I'm not special. Um, a small company like me. Right, from the small company. My first, re my first thing is I can't afford this. Right. Do you know what? The other side of that coin, I can afford not to do it. Right. Because it builds a type of relationship with your team that you can't buy. Yeah, yeah. And if you try to buy it, it don't work. Yeah. But if you do it the way that I've done it, because somebody else put it in my heart. Yeah. Not because I'm smart enough to do it. Um, these guys would die for me. Yeah. Because they know that I'm going to die for them. Yeah. They know that I'm going to do everything I can to bring that customer to ring that phone. Yeah. So that I could get them in front of that customer. Have they been? Uh, have they been a big? I mean, you've grown a lot. You need more people. Have they been the big resource and finding people? Hey, come work at this company. Or no? You just it's been, it hasn't worked. It worked like a, like I wanted. I have. It's hard to find people. But it yeah. is. They have helped me get two good guys. Yeah. Uh, it is really hard to find people. I learned in one of the classes today is recruitment and some stuff that yeah. I want to learn. I don't have a problem retaining you. Sure. Once sure. I get you, you don't want to go nowhere. Yeah. Um, and it's genuine. It's it's not just we're doing something just so that you want to have this mindset and do it. It's yeah. it's it's something that we live. Who you are. Sure. It's, it's, it's something we live. And and yes, they have brought me a couple. Um, it's hard. It is hard still. I've, I've hired a lot of people. And I've hired a couple people I sent down to the, to the bars that was kind of an embarrassment. Mm. And so I had to make a, a special trip to tell the guy, man, I apologize. Man, I'm doing the best I can to get the right people. And nobody's paying more than I am. You know, I'm doing everything I can. Sure. And, and, and I didn't even get a few sentences. I didn't even get a sentence out of my mouth. He said, oh, oh. I go through the same thing, man. Yeah. I understand totally. It's just what it is, right? It now. is what it is. Do the best you can, and so that's what we do. Yeah, we just do the best we can. Um, treat the customer. Uh, how are we unique? Yeah. I'm still really trying to put a hundred percent target on it, but I think we're unique because if I tell you I truly care, I do. Oh yeah. Um, I want to know that your son is having leg surgery today or whatever. I'm going to call you the next day and ask you, hey, how's your son doing at leg surgery? Yeah. Because I'm really curious to know. Yeah. And I know that she's going to be like, you're, you're, you're calling to ask me about my son's, what? Yeah. Because people have said, what are you doing? Yeah. I'm like, well, man, I know Is that's this a who big I am? deal. Yeah. I mean, that's a big deal. I'm curious for once and then for two. I know I could, what is it about with you? It's the relationship. Yeah. You know, and the guy at, at the restaurant group, he says he needs somebody to come down and um, be on call for 24 hours. And he's going to pay such and such. Well, he does. Yeah. For two hours worth of work for what he paid was astronomical. Well, he needed to do it again. And he saw that. And he's like, well, maybe I could cut that back. And he says, just have him charge me for the time that he, that he want. 
I said, no, Jeff. I said, we're going to do exactly what we did last time. Yep. I'm going to have the guy there. I'm going to pay him whether he goes down or not. Yep. So that guy got paid 24 hours, only worked two. Yep. And I said, I'm going to do the exact same thing. And he said, well, how can a business like that afford to, to do it? I said, Jeff, how can I afford not to do it? Yeah. And it was a great moment to him say to him, him. That's a big business owner, too. Yeah. If I tell you it's about the relationship, yeah. how do I show you that? Yeah. I can't. This is the way I show you. I don't need to nickel and dime you for everything. Yeah. Because I care about the relationship. I know you need this. And you paid last time because you didn't know. You, you wanted to be sure that that contract was secure and 100% fulfilled. Yeah. You still want to do the same thing, but you spent a couple, three grand you didn't need to spend. Yeah. Any smart man don't want to do that. Sure. Okay, so I'm going to help you not do that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pay my guy for the 24 hours. I'm not going to charge you anything. Mm -hmm. He's like, how can you do that? How can I not? Mm -hmm. Look at what we have done and the profit we have made on the amount of dollars we've, because we're making profit. I was going to say, you've done a lot of work for this company. This isn't like it's a one-time customer. No, it's so not. So people understand that, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's close to a million dollars worth of work. Yeah. And so he says to me, how can I do that? Yeah. Jeff, how can I not do that? Right. And so those little opportunities there, you have to seize them. Yeah. Um, another guy on the bus yesterday, somebody already agreed to a price. Um, it wasn't much, about 800 bucks or something. He was going to call and just give them 200 or talk to him about it. And I said, hey, man, how about you call that customer and just give her that $800 and say, I apologize for any inconvenience or any confusion about price or whatever. Yeah. And I explained to him the reason that I thought that that was the best way to handle it. And you know what he did? He got on the phone, he called, and he said, he said call that lady and tell her we're not charging her nothing. Yeah. Because that's marketing money that yep. you cannot put a price on. Sure. And I don't do it for that reason alone. That's just a byproduct yeah. of the relationship that I try to build with you. Right. And if you know, and I tell people all the time, I have never one time had a great relationship with a customer that I had a trouble getting the money from you. Right, right. Um, I've listened to uh, some stuff and some other meetings and stuff and heard some other things and I finally said, I, I just want to ask you one question. You know, you built the value on the beginning because the guy wanted to do the work. He signed for it. But at the end, you say he's griping about it. Did you build the value in the middle and the end? Right. And so, well, something fell apart there. It's not... That's a good nugget. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So... I think that's one of the biggest things that we can remember, and I try to tell my guys, don't forget, we build the value to the last time we pull out the driveway. Right. Not just because we got the right person answering the phone, and you got your spill right, and all of this stuff. You, you, you can't just say it's about the relationship and not do the thing yeah. to show people that it's about the relationship. That's great. And so that's, that's one reason I think that we have been successful. Yeah. And that's one reason I got through and I started to tell you, 2008 when the uh, bottom fell out of everything, I was totally fine. Yeah. I had low overhead. I had two calls a day, I was okay, or one. Yeah. So, and the reason that I was able to go do that and get through those times is because of the stuff that I'm implementing with the knowledge that you have armed me with, that together, sky's the limit. Yeah. Um, because I had all the other stuff, I just didn't know how to run the business by the numbers and run it like a professional, college-educated, a PhD-type person would come out and do in a corporate-type setting. Yeah. I didn't have that. Yeah. You know, I'm just a high school guy that got married at a young age, had three kids, and saw a way that this would be a good way that I could provide for them. Sure. I get to use my hands and my brain at the same time, yeah. and it's instant gratification. Right. Who doesn't love that? <laughs> now you get to give that to other people. And I do. That's great. And I, I give that to my guys, and I coach them up now about how successful that can be down the road. Sure. That everything you do today will get you down the road 20 years from now. It's good stuff. Because it has gotten me to where I'm at. 
and I've never advertised one single thing. <laughs> I would suggest you probably should a little bit, just as you want to keep growing the business. Well, I, I, yeah. Yes, I've actually talked to two or three, and I've got some plans in place. Right now, I think we're at 1%, basically, because yeah. yeah. I'll sponsor the, the high school uh, basketball tournament. Yeah. Um, all kinds of things. But you said you wanted to get up to 5 or 6%. I think. To do that, yeah. I know that I need to have <clears throat> at least 60 phone calls coming in a day yeah. with the ability to book 20. Right. You know, and so I didn't know that stuff two years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that now. Um, you guys have taught me all of that. Um, and so if I thought I was one of those guys that would be a little out of time, we know this, we know this, we do this. But I was one of those that just, boom, let's do it. Yeah. Um, you, you're never going to get it unless you get in the pool. Right. You're, you're, you, you, you're, you're not going to win the race, the, the, the race of swimming the laps in the pool by just putting your foot and seeing how cold the water is. You're just going to watch them run the race. Yeah. And yeah, you're going to do okay. You're not going to go out of business. You're not going to do this. <clears throat> But if you don't do 100% of what certain path puts in front of you or take advantage. Now, I don't take advantage of 100%. Sure. I it's one, yeah. But when I put my head on the pillow, I know every day that I've done everything I could to grab everything that I could, yeah. learn everything that I could, yeah. do everything. So that when I look my guy in the eye, he asked me, why did I only have two calls today? I can say, it's the economy right now. I'm doing everything I can. I'm spending such and such. I actually have kicked it up. I'm going to be spending immediately when we go back about three grand a week. Yeah. Um, because what I'm really trying to do now is prepare for January, February, March, and it's April. traditional slow. Yeah. Of next year. Yeah. Um, that's what you got to do. And that's, you know, before cash projections, think about it. I never thought about all this stuff yeah. until being a part of certain path. Uh. Um, like I said, the other part, uh, customer service and, and keeping the thing. Now, we did step our game up a, a good bit. Yeah, you're doing the training. But 30 to 50% easy yeah. by the things that you have brought to the table. Yeah. Um, and I, it's invaluable. That's I'm right. so blessed that my ego did not get in the way of saying, I've been in business for 18 years. I don't have to train any success or I'm successful now or whatever. Um, I knew that that ESI magazine would have something that I could learn from. Yeah. Some product I might be able to sell my customer or educate them on. Sure. I had no idea that it could be this. Yeah. And now you're getting to, to, to get, spread that success to your, your people and your customers and your community. It's yeah, a good that, story. I, I know what, in the next 10 years I have, I have a plan and I hope to be able to do nothing but help other people around the country. And I don't know about what. Yeah. Like I told the team before I left, I said, I want y'all to think about this. I said, I want to carry all, every one of you to Florida in about a week or 10 days. And we're, we'll go down on Friday. We'll come back on Sunday, but we're going to spend the weekend and we're going to just pick up trash and do whatever. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I told them, those people pour into us. Yeah. If I ask those people in the platoon, any one of them for anything, they bend over backwards to yeah. give it to me. Yeah. And it's not an obligation, but the relationship makes me feel like I need to be there to help them. Yeah. And, and I'm going to find some way to help them. Yeah. In one way or the other. Right. Um, because that's what I want to do. Yeah. Uh, I hope this thing grows enough to where all I have to do is do an hour a day. Yeah. Talk to each one of the guys, keep doing exactly what I'm doing so that I could expand on what I'm doing in the community. Um, like, there's a lot of single mothers out there that don't have a father figure at home. Um, and we all know that they turn out to be great kids. Sure. These women are amazing people. Yeah. Um, but they turn out a little bit better if you got that man there to help you um, reinforce some of that stuff. Sure. Um, I've always thought of ways, how could I, because I've, I've had other parents with my kids uh, tell me that I should write a book about that kind of thing. 
So the stuff that I am using here with uh, EP or SGI, certain pad, um, I've been using my whole life. Yeah, yeah. I just didn't know how to run a business. Yeah, and it's giving you that little bit and now yeah. taking off. I love so it. if somebody asks me today, what's the biggest contribution you could have if you came to my company to help me? The relationships that we can build. That's good stuff. How to build those relationships that can't be broken. Yeah. Like, <clears throat> um, I have life insurance policies on all my key, all my all my guys. Mm -hmm. um, I used to not do medical insurance. Mm -hmm. I can't afford that. Yeah. I can't afford not to do it. Right. Another light bulb moment. Yeah. I hear one he want to go to the doctor do something he, he can't get to the doctor. Right. And I'm driving home and I'm feeling like, right. Wow, you're really successful here. Your guy can't even get to the doctor. Yeah. And that little voice says, you need to take care of them like you take care of your family members at home. You wouldn't let your family members at home go without health insurance, would you? Right. I almost had to pull over because I'm like, no. Yeah. Of course I wouldn't. Right. So at that moment, I realized that I wasn't treating them the way that I should. Yeah. Since that day, and I tell them, I'm going to treat every one of you like you're my three sons. Yeah. And I want to be involved in your life as much as you want me to be. Yeah. I want to help you achieve whatever goal you want. Um, we wrote them down. We, we have them on Graylands is this and Derek's is this. And we put them around the door. Oh, you yeah. have? So that we can go in and out. Really? And subconsciously each day we know that Derek's trying to get him a new truck or Graylon wants to buy a new house, yeah. or whatever they're trying to do, uh, we see those things. Um, whenever they, like my secretary is um, really big in a food bank in her community. Yeah. And so a lot of times to do something nice for her for each month, um, I will donate money to her food bank in her name. Oh wow. Uh, so to help her community. That's great. Um, the, the, the guy can't have his kid get to uh, band camp. It's an extra $1,500, um, whatever it is. Um, could be $200. Um, he can't get his kid there. I don't walk up and hand him $1,500 and say, hey, get, take, take your kid, man. Yeah. Because he'd say, oh, man, I don't need your money. You know? Yeah. So... It's about how we approach everything that I've learned over the last few sure, years. Sure, sure. And so <clears throat> you do a different aspect and say, hey man, somebody left a $1,500 envelope in my mailbox and said that take your kid, God wants your kid to go to camp. Yeah. How did this happen? That's the stuff that I live for. Yeah. Um, that's the stuff that my customers that use us yeah. I want them to know that that's what I want to do with that money. Yeah. Because I do. Yeah. And, and I tell everybody, one day you'll be able to see everything that I'm telling you is not just script, smoke and screen. Because, true, a lot of people that hear this may not believe it or may not, may think that just because I know we're recording and we're talking that I'm putting on a show. Yeah. Or I'm making things more than they are. Yeah. Believe me, that's not Gary Craig. I was gonna say if they're watching on YouTube, they're they're seeing. I think you can see how you're talking in your yeah, body language. This is this is what you are. Yeah. And and when I have an, I don't have many other owners ask me questions. Yeah, I'm just two years into this thing, but when they do, just like that guy that asked me, I said, "Man, you go back and you tell your daughter this is not something we're discussing any longer. Yeah, we're gonna do it. Yeah, that's the first thing you need to do." The, the guy in tag meeting that was saying such and such, and I said, dude, this is what you need to do. Yeah. Focus on the one thing, and that's the one thing that um, you guys have helped me with, um, is I know to get to this goal, there's 10 things we have to do, and a lot of times, I kind of focus on all 10 to get a little bit done on each one. Yeah. No, that's not the way you do it. Yeah. If you do this one first, then the others start falling quicker and quicker and quicker. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I've it learned that. Momentum. Yep. Um, and so, Good stuff. Every day, uh, you just try to do the best you can. Yeah. 
Um, and whenever you fall short, and I do, I do way too, I do way more than I want to. Yep. Um, but you pick yourself up, uh, you're transparent, and you tell the guys that, no, I screwed that up. Yeah. A lot of people would use another white lie to say that that got screwed up. Yeah. I don't, I don't want my guys to ever try to think that they're going to catch me telling them something that's not the truth. Yeah. Because the truth means so much to me that I hired a couple's kid that, uh, from church that I've been going to church with for years. And I, I had to go in one day and just cut it loose. Yeah. Um, because that's a hill we die on. Yeah. Um, it's about your character, being honest, humble, and hungry. Yeah. If you got to turn it off and on, you're not there. Yeah. Um, so good stuff. Hey, man. That's Garrett, what, that's I, what we do. This is this was uh, this was an emotional, great. Uh, hour, it was like an hour and a half, but I really enjoyed this conversation. I, I appreciate you being so open and honest and and uh, and letting people in a little bit. And I'm so excited that you, the company's doing well and your people are benefiting. And I'm excited to see where you guys go in uh, in the future. Well, I want everyone to know that the one reason that I'm here today is because I have a drive to be here mm -hmm. and I have a team that supports me like no other and I couldn't be here without them. Mm -hmm. um, I'm humbled that you even asked me <laughs> to be a part of this and I hope that someone hears something out there that means something to them yeah. that changes their life for the better. I know everything I've done with certain paths has changed my life and my team's life for the better. Yeah. And anything that I can do to um, help anyone do that, um, that's what I'm here for. I love it. I love it. Well, thanks so much, Gary. I really appreciate your honesty and openness. This was a lot of fun. Thank you, sir. Thank you. That's Gary Craddock of Craddock Electrical Services in Nashville, Tennessee. I hope you've enjoyed today's show. And if so, please like and subscribe on YouTube. If you're on your favorite podcast player, please leave us a five-star review. The two seconds you take to leave a review will help other success mining contractors like you find us and hopefully get a little bit better, which helps our entire industry. And please join me for future episodes. This has been The Successful Contractor, powered by CertainPath. The Successful Contractor podcast is part of the CertainPath family. CertainPath is the largest member-owned best practices organization for independent residential services contractors. We provide our members a competitive edge through proven proprietary management tools and expertise, marketing programs, training, and group buying power, along with a highly active and eager-to-help membership. For more information about CertainPath, visit mycertainpath.com.